You're good. Okay, so good evening everybody. Welcome to the Alon Unplugged number 21. I apologize for our delayed start. We had a bit of an issue connecting onto the internet, but we are connected now. I have a beautiful model here that I'm working with, okay? Um, we have got a lot of hair, very dense, um, beautiful color by Evie and the color team. Can you, can you turn the volume down, is that okay? Um, so basically what we're doing is we're working on a shape which is collapsing the shape. The hair is very dense, um, it's very kind of swollen because of obviously the bleach and all the color. So I'm, I've pre-cut at least a half of my shape simply for time purposes, okay? So this is how I cut it so far. I started off by taking an area of disconnection from the recession through back to below the crown and then from there went vertically down to the nape, okay? I then started working with a round cutting line, working on the base all the way round to the top of the ear. I stopped at that point, came around the front with a diagonal section, i.e. to mirror the hairline and then worked back on myself, pivoting to vertical, working on the base with a round cutting line. So what I'm doing in effect is trying to collapse the shape, okay? I've used some day, -day mist and some uh, oil milk just to try and control the texture because like I said, the hair is quite swollen, okay? Oil milk is good for basically trying to rehydrate the hair and manage the texture, whereas day, -day will help the comb glide through the hair a lot easier, okay? So obviously they're both downless products. And what you've got to do, once you've cut the hair, because I'm going from quite long to quite short, the hair reacts and responds. So it's almost like in shock. So what you need to do is basically comb the hair into position, allow it to cool down, allow it to set by itself. Don't forget, the head is constantly releasing heat, which is drying the root, which would allow the hair to sit into position and make it a lot easier for me. So now I'm going to work onto my other zone. Now I've got a bit of a dilemma really because I've got a beautiful colour, okay, but I've also got a texture to the hair which isn't necessarily naturally curly. It's more like a colour curl, like a bleach curl, which can be a little bit aggressive in texture. So what I'm going to do is I've cut a lot of the shape down to reduce a lot of the density, but on this side I'm going to go for something a little bit more curly, a little bit fuller, okay, a little bit more kind of scruffy and raw in texture. Um, I might adapt and change depending on how the hair is responding to me, okay? But at the same time, I do want to do something where we can have a bit of fun tonight. I really want to try and enjoy cutting this hair for you, okay? And I'm going to work with the principle of working, kind of combing it once and cutting it once and really trying to manipulate the shape. So now what I want to do again is I want to collapse some of the internal shapes to the side because again, the hair is so dense. And I am going to try and release as much of the texture as I can. We did discuss before to maintain a lot of length in front. Um, we don't want a short fringe. That's not something we're, we're passionate about. And also we definitely want, we don't want to have any kind of shaving happening. Um, that's something which is priority to us. So we're not going to do anything which involves any type of scissor or comb. So as you can see, as I'm combing the hair, there's constantly little hairs coming out where the hair is quite porous. So, what you have to do is constantly rehydrate the hair and put the moisture back in the hair, okay? I'm sectioning off the fringe because I want to keep that, okay? Now, once I've worked the shape, I'm going to see how the curl is evolving. If the curl isn't bending, then I'm going to dry it smooth. But if I can manage to get the curl to actually bend and rotate, then I'm going to dry it curly. Ideally, in my mindset, I'm looking at the texture, I'm looking at how it's sitting, and it looks more like a colour curl rather than a, a natural curl. So if I cut it down quite tight, what's going to happen is I'm going to cut quite a lot of that kind of aggressive texture out and it's going to manage itself, okay? So now I'm going to come from the recession down, taking a diagonal section, okay? And then from here, I'm going to come back up. That way I'm removing a bit more density further up in the head, okay? And then I'm going to come back down to just above the occipital bone. Okay? Now first things first, get, it, get the section in and then spend your time grooming. Before you start cutting anything, you make sure that everything is super, super clean. Okay? 
For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, welcome to the Alon Unplugged. Uh, for those of you who have tuned in and the regular ch- people who tune in, please, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you joining us. And please feel free to ask me anything you want, okay? Now this is not groomed still. I want it super clean, so really manipulate the hair. I don't want to be lazy. That's one of the biggest weaknesses people have when they're cutting hair. They become too complacent with their technique and they become very lazy. Every so often, get rid of the hair that's in the comb and that way what will happen is it will allow you to work much more methodically through your shape and it will allow you to work clean. Are we okay with reception, everybody? Is there good. good? Okay. Good, 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 good. Right. So, comb the hair through. I'm going to use some day day, that will help me as well. That will help me glide through the hair. Now, I want to do something that is quite creative. I want to do something that's quite fun. I've got an amazing colour, which we've got the formula written up for you, and I'm going to get Evie to come up later on and discuss exactly what you want. So, if you've got any colour questions, feel free to write them down, and then when Evie comes up, I can always get Evie to discuss them with you. I know last week there were a few colour questions, and uh, I'm not necessarily the best person to be asking for colour. I can celebrate the colour with you, but I can't, I can't uh, tell you formulations as such. Okay. So, I'm going to use Day Day on the hairline to rehydrate the hair so that it's easier for me to cut the hair. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me and uh, Michelle Michelle will discuss it for me and ask me the questions. Okay, so look at the bend in the hair, look at the curve in the hair. I need to decide what the best length is for it to sit. Now if you look carefully, the hair bends at this point. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. So I need to basically cut the bend out of the hair. So I need to come across, I'm gonna go quite tight, okay? Uh, the reason I'm gonna go quite tight is because I don't want the hair to move. So I'm gonna rest the ha- my, my fingers actually on the scalp. So that way, let me get it super clean for you. There you go. So I'm gonna rest my fingers on the scalp. That way it can sit quite fitted, okay? Taking the hair down. Combing it once, cutting it once, and looking how the hair sits. Can you see how the hair bends? It has a nice kind of bend to itself. It doesn't, it's not flicking, it's managing itself. And my number system is I'm basically gonna work it on the base. So I am gonna work diagonal sections. That way my over direction, my elevation, and my cutting line are all in play at this particular time, okay? And I'm working on the base, so my shape will be round. Can you see, okay, or shall I move where there's a bit more light? Let me spin the chair round so there's a bit more direct light on top. Is that better? Yeah, that's great. That's better. that's better, isn't it? Okay, you can see now the length that I've chosen is good because it's starting, the shape is, is bending into itself, so I'm not going to have to spend ages blow drying that, trying to mould it into shape, which is probably one of the biggest mistakes people make when it comes to choice of length. Then they have to basically blow dry the haircut into shape rather than allowing the haircut to do the work for them. Tilt the head, because if the head's down, then my back can be straight and I'm not bending my spine. There's a question from Andy. Hey, Andy. He's asking, what product are you using for cutting lotion? Okay, so I'm using the Day Day. So if you want to show the Day Day to the camera. Okay, so the Day Day is basically a cutting lotion. Okay, and it's a Davenous product. And it's one of my favorite, um, for those of you who are regular followers, you'll see me using it all the time, every day, every time. Um, You basically cannot really overuse it. It's water-based, so that way it always, always um, sits nicely and it always helps you comb the hair through really nicely. Good. So the haircut is slowly starting to mould itself into position. Again, diagonal sections. Now I'm going to go straight into the back. Michelle, can I borrow your fingers, please? Okay, so I'm going to go right into the back. Thank you. Okay. Comb the hair out from the base. 
look at the root of number of the, of the hair that you're cutting to guarantee that it's coming out from its base, okay? So look at that root, not the underneath root. That way I know that the hair is coming out from its base. Comb it through, hold it with lots of tension. Be mindful of the skin, obviously. We talk about that every week in regards to the elasticity, elasticity of the skin. Be mindful of that, but if you're consistent with your tension, you're gonna manage that. Now my vertical shape in this scenario is gonna be round, okay? Now this is a haircut which, even though it's gonna be quite creative, is gonna be something that you can technically use in the salon if you wanted to. You just, my advice to you would be just change the choices of length. So they were a bit longer and a bit, a bit sort of softer. There you go. Head down, perfect, thank you. Okay. Everything's coming out from the base. So my number system is one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and so forth. Okay? And what I'm doing is I'm allowing the shape to form by itself. So every time I comb it once, what I do is I look at the root, I look at the skin. That will allow me to check my elevation and my over direction. Okay? I'm making sure that the shape is, the sections are constantly clean. Okay, very, very important. Okay, that way you're in control of the hair. Head down for me, darling. Perfect, keep your head there for me. Thank you very much. Yes, Michelle? So, uh, we just have a question from Carol. Yes. Hi, Carol. Um, where does the top section pattern come from? Good, okay, so my disconnection zone, okay, uh, is quite a simple one because the idea is that I want to travel up and down the head to allow length in this area where the, where the hair is lacking due to the ear and to go higher up in the crown where the hair is obviously a lot more denser in this area in the back of the head. So my sectioning or my zoning, my disconnection, obviously has to make sense. One of the biggest, one of the biggest things that I find when we're teaching people is they, they will put a disconnection without actually having a reason for the shape. Uh, everything, when it comes to cutting hair guys, everything should have a reason, yeah? There should always be a, an element of logic which is applied into the shape. Otherwise, what you're going to find is that if there's no logic into what you're doing, is you're constantly going to be lost. Whereas if you apply logic, the shape works by itself. Okay, after you've cut the hair, you can see the hair's reacting on me. So I'm not going to worry too much. I'm going to wet it down in a minute and that will calm it down. But I need to get past the ear because this is the southern area. This is a difficult area to work around here. So get the shape in quickly, and then you can spend loads of time. Now look at that section. That's way too thick, yeah? If I cut that, I'm gonna have loads of finger marks. Can you see that? Yeah, so I need to half that. And that's one of the biggest mistakes people make when they're cutting hair. Their sections are too wide, and then when their sections are too wide, they lose control over their over direction and their elevation, and then they're not sure what, what went wrong or why they've got loads of finger marks in their haircut. The biggest reason for finger marks is to do with tension or inconsistent tension and also the fact that their sections are way too thick. So on the bottom half of your screen, on the left hand side, there is a share button. Please feel free to use it. Uh, it's really important that we share these things with as many people as we can simply because I want people to um, ask me as many questions as they want and I want as many people to engage as we can and try and build the community of sharing. Okay. Again, next section down. And now what I'm finding is I'm going to work basically into my previous shape, which is here on this side, and I'm going to work into that zone. So as I'm working through, come down. Okay. And I've got to be careful because I don't want to get longer, so I'm not combing everything onto. I'm not going, for example, from seven to six. I'm constantly moving my guide backwards. So the hair that I'm actually introducing is coming out from the base, but the hair that's the guide is actually what's moving. Now, what's nice about this evening is we've got some of the team here who are here to watch. And we've also got a guest from, from Greece. Um, this young man over here is Mr. Yorgos. And Mr. Yorgos is here for three days with us. 
and he is we were working with Ted Joe yesterday and uh, he'll be working with Ted over the next couple of days. And we've also got our team who are training to be educators and we've got some of our stylists also in here watching. And I think the thing with my this kind of shape, again look, look how wide that section is. That's way too wide, Johnny. Yeah? Way too wide. Johnny, don't be naughty. Practice what you preach, son. Okay, nice fine section so you're in control. Okay? Uh, Jenny, let me come on this way so you can see better. Is that better? Perfect. Okay. So again, combing my guide onto the hair that I'm cutting so that I'm basically using, looking at the root of the hair that I'm introducing, okay? Every time I'm looking at the root. Now I'm not too worried about the texture of the hair because as I start to blow dry the hair and apply the correct product, I'll start to make the hair much more pliable and the hair will start to sit into position much easier for me, okay? I'm connecting it, I don't know if you can see, but I'm actually connecting it into the previous cut zone, so zone one, okay? And you see how the hair's reacting on me? It's kind of going like, oh, 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 kind of quite aggressive in texture. So I need to constantly, constantly bring it into place. And then what I will do, when I, before I move on to the top, I'll basically wet the hair down so it starts to set and the heat of the, the head will start to mould the root which will allow me to mould the end very easily. Also, I'll probably use maybe like a relaxing fluid or, or maybe I'll use like a, a, one of the mousse, maybe a volume mousse just to help me control the texture. Okay, now you can see my sections started off mirroring the hairline which was diagonal, okay, and it's continued the whole way through. Okay, working on the base. Every time, just calming the hair into position. Okay, and now as I'm working, I'm going to constantly, I'm looking for this guy, which is zone one. So I'm looking for zone one to be able to hit it at that point. Okay, you can see the hair started to dry. Can you see that it's starting to dry neatly now on the underneath because the root is drying because of the heat of the head, and that's the key. Whenever you're cutting hair, this is something that we talk about all the time, okay? The goal is to look at the root, because the root will tell you everything. It will tell you the movement of the guide, it will tell you well, the elevation, the other direction, it will tell you the bend and the growth patterns, it will tell you the flexibility of the skin. So before you close your scissors, make sure every single time you look at the root, okay? Now my body is moving around. Now if I could, it would be much easier for me to stand where, basically here, opposite my section. But obviously I'm playing to a camera, so my body is actually slightly offset, which isn't ideal, but if, when you're doing this, um, Jamie, do me a favor, babe, would you come here one second? Mm -hmm. When you're cutting this, what you should be doing is every single time, you should be aiming for the middle of your chest. So, so the middle of your chest, which means you've got to be parallel to your shape. And every time, you're moving around like this, so your body's static. Now when your back is straight, if the head is upright and I'm trying to work this shape, I'm having to bend, so don't be scared to manipulate the head, stand opposite your shape, look at the root, pull the hair out, analyze the elevation and the other direction to make sure that your vertical shape, in this scenario, my vertical shape is round, and my horizontal shape is also round, due to the fact that I'm working on the base. My vertical shape is round due to the fact that my cutting line and my elevation is all playing a part in that scenario. Okay. Last couple of sections, and then it should be connecting itself in. Come on this side, Jenny. Thank you. So one of the things that I'd like to talk to you all about tonight is about how Alilon plays a part in Enna. For those of you who aren't really aware of or tuning in for the first time, Enna is basically our salon brand. So we have two brands, Alilon and Enna. Enna is our consumer brand. So it's basically a salon which does consumer hair and consumer beauty, waxing, facials, and so forth. Um, the beauty of having this type of brand is that Alilon supports Enna with education. So in effect, Enna is proof that Alilon and the system of Alilon works. Um, we have an amazing team of people, really good people, good hearts, 
lots of passion, really focused on becoming the best that they, they personally can be. And um, it's beautiful having guests and friends who come in and spend time with us. So if you're ever in London, please feel free to visit the academy and visit the salon and meet the team. Uh, they'll, trust me, they'll make you feel welcome. That's one of the things that, as a company, we're quite uh, lucky to have a reputation for. Um, the address is number 5 Great Queen Street, London WC2B 5DG. So number 5 Great Queen Street, London WC2B 5DG. That's the address. The closest station to us is Holborn and Covent Garden. We're literally just in between Holborn and Covent Garden station. Uh, on our YouTube channel, you can also see where we are. We've got a video which basically shows you exactly where we are. And uh, if you're ever in London and you want to pass by and say hello, please, please, please feel free to pass by. Okay, so I've cut the underneath there. Now to steady, please. Perfect, thank you very much. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the hair down. That makes the hair more pliable for me. And it allows me, using the tight end of the comb, okay, to comb the hair into position so that the root will start to dry due to the heat from the head. And all of the hair will start to sit into position for me which will make it much easier later on when it's dry to check my shape and refine. Now, I do like the idea of crafting outlines into the shape. So I want to show you something through the front. And this is a mistake that a lot of people do when they're working around hairlines, is they don't realise the impact of old direction and how that affects the line. For example, in this scenario, you can see the hair wants to move back like that. That's how the hair wants to grow. It's growing that in that direction. So if I comb the hair forward like this, and I cut that off, what will happen is when it goes back, the shape will graduate itself into the shape, which will make it quite soft on the edge. So the key here is actually to comb it into its natural position, and then visually, just work the line how you want to see it. Don't comb it. Don't manipulate it with the comb. Manipulate it with your scissors. Put the shape into place, let it react, work with it. And don't forget when it's dry, I can spend more time refining. But can you see now, look, that is how it's going to sit. I don't have to try and manipulate it into shape. That's now how the hair is always going to sit. And again, it works the same over the ear. Can you see this area here? It wants to move back like that. So if I comb it forward and cut it, I'm going to create lots of unnecessary graduation. So I'm going to keep this softness here and I'm going to use the point where it starts to break dance on top of the ear as my guide. And I'm not going to comb the hair again. I'm just going to secure the ear down slightly so I can work around it. I'm going to comb the hair through, okay? And then I'm slowly, slowly going to start to remove any little excess hairs that are reacting in the wrong way, okay? Welcome, John. How's it going, John? All good, buddy. So again, same here. If I comb it forward and cut it, when I let it go, it's going to jump back. So you don't want to do that. So just comb it with the wind of the comb this time, okay? And comb it to where you want it, where it wants to sit. And then visually, just work the line in. Use a chipping technique. Let me spin it around a little bit so the light hits it better for you to see. Is that better? Perfect. Okay, tilt the head. Now you can see it a lot clearer, yeah? Um, so again, let the hair react, let it move into position. Because I'm approaching it from this direction, my blades are also pushing the hair back. So what's happening is I'm encouraging the natural movement of the hair, and I'm not trying to position the hair. I'm actually letting, I'm cutting the hair into position. So that way it limits the amount of problems I will have later on. Now because I've, I didn't drag the ear down, I just dragged it to the side and back like this. And that way what happens is the skin doesn't stretch down. Because when the skin, if you're going closer, Jamie, if the skin goes down like that and you cut it, when you let go, the whole thing jumps up. So the key here is just to bend the ear gently forward and gently back. Okay, that's a really good little tip for managing the shape around the ear. Michelle, if we've got any questions, do interrupt yeah, me. Yeah? Got one from Samuel. Um, he said, so if our vertical shape is round, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Our horizontal shape is also round. Mm -hmm. Technically, this would be layering, not graduation, right? Because the internal shape isn't shorter than the, sorry, the external shape isn't shorter than the internal shape. So the, very good, great question. Uh, in the end, this particular haircut will have a layered result due to the fact that my cutting line is round. Now, in effect, what's going to happen is the hair will hug the head really nicely, okay, because I haven't built a corner in the shape. Now, let me just come around this way. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to start to work around the ear. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently remove any excess hair that sits on the ear. Now the attention to detail in this area is so important. So in this scenario you can stretch the skin quite a bit. Okay? I'll try and stand out of the light so you can see really clearly. Now what's interesting when you're discussing shape is to understand what we're trying to show you. And what we're trying to show you as a company is the effect that technique has on the end result. So, when we talk about technique, we don't refer to layering and graduation and line as techniques anymore. We refer to them more as end results because basically, technique is, what, is what's used to achieve an end result. And in our scenario, when we're cutting this haircut, I'm using cutting lines, elevation, and over direction. So for us, techniques are actually cutting lines, elevation, and over direction. Why is that? Some of you are going to be thinking, what are you talking about, Johnny? Let me try and explain it quick, quickly. If you think about it, the word technique, technique is basically a method of working or a way of achieving a result. Layering is the end result. It's the finished look. It's the outcome of many different factors and those factors are basically methods of working so for example in this scenario our method of working or our way of creating a layered shape is by using cutting lines elevation and over direction so this is what we as Alalon refer to as techniques um, we have been uh, over the past seven years now constantly refining and rewriting and redirecting our primary shape to make it as pure as possible. And one of the things we've realized in our debates is actually what layering and, of, and uh, graduation and so forth is. And it's really important that we, we, don't, we don't fixate ourselves on the fact that things can't change because things can change. Because as knowledge grows and knowledge develops, we realize that certain things aren't 100% as accurate as they could be. So, in this scenario, I've used a cutting line, elevation and over direction to create my shape. I'm now going to blow dry all this hair on top, cut that hair dry, and then start working on all my exterior shape once the hair is dry. So, what product am I going to use to blow dry? So I'm going to use a Love Smooth, and I'm going to use a relaxing, relaxing food. I'm also going to use a little bit of Day Day, just so my brush can dry through the hair. Now, I know what the hair is going to be cling on to that moisture. So, what do I use first? Do I use a relaxing paste, or a relaxing fluid, or do I use the hair, the hair smoother? Now, ironically, you can think about them similar, because they're quite, they can be quite heavy products. Um, Love Smooth is a little bit more moisture-based, water-based, whereas the um, relaxing fluid is more cream-based. So if I use this first, it's gonna basically stop this from penetrating. So I'm going to start off with a water-based product first, okay? So I use Love Smooth, okay? I don't have to use a lot. You can see the shine in it. It's very moisture-based, can you see that? Yeah? So I'm going to use that, and I'm really going to try and distribute that really well within the hair, because the hair needs it. In fact, if I'm honest, it's screaming for moisture. Um, I know that this is going to dry quite smooth, quite easily. It's just going to just be a bit resistant in regards to holding onto the moisture. Uh, again, when you're applying your product, apply it free everywhere and apply it as evenly as you can. Good. Run your hands, run your hands through the hair. Focus on the mid lengths and ends quite a lot. 
So I don't know, guys, if someone wants to have a look and see if Evie's available to come and have a little chat about the colour. Yes, That'll we're going to get a ton of questions about the colour. That's fantastic. A lot of love and the formula. That's fantastic. So now I'm using the relaxing, the relaxing fluid, okay? I'm going to get rid of all this hair. Okay? And I'm going to apply the product through the hair quite evenly. And I'm, I'm, I'm being quite generous simply because the hair needs it. It needs that moisture. It needs that kind of uh, amount of strength to hold it and control it. Don't be scared to really work it into the hairlines. Are we okay with reception? Have any problems with reception, please? No, it's okay. Yeah? Good. Do we have any questions in regards to drying or the shape? If you have any questions in regards to the haircut, if you don't, that's a good sign, because we're doing okay. It means I'm explaining things well. Uh, if you do, feel free to ask me. Is it Samuel that asked that question before? Uh, yes, it's Samuel Carpenter. Samuel. So Samuel's obviously done uh, the primary shape course with us before, which is fantastic. And it's something that I know we talk about every week because it's the fundamental way of us teaching. It's what, I, it's what we're trying to really we're trying to use to make a difference and it's something that's really important for us to, to use and share with people. I'm going to use a Denman brush. The reason why I'm going to use Denman is because it gives me a lot of tension, okay? And I'm also going to use um, a hairdryer with a nozzle, okay? To help me control the texture. I'm going to start on my short hair first, okay? Lots of heat, lots of speed. And I'm going to apply the hair dry going down the hair. I'm going to comb the hair into place. And then as I comb the hair into place, I'm going to start to let that dry quite a lot by itself. I don't want to over dry that, because I don't really need to. I'm not worried about my length just now. I'm going to focus on the slightly shorter hair first. Head down for me, darling. Thank you very much. And I really want to get this area here. I want to start to get my length a bit smoother looking. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the length out of the way and I'm going to focus a little bit, just a little bit, on getting the underneath nice and smooth. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm not worried about the outline. I'm going to deal with that in a moment. But what I'm going to, what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to work with this length now and let the, the heat from the head dry the root underneath. So, I've basically brushed all the hair underneath, I've brushed all the short hair down and I'm allowing the heat from the head, the head to dry that, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on blow drying all of my length, okay? Using a wrap drying technique. For those of you who've never really worked on wrap drying before, think of it as wrapping the hair around the head and applying the heat. That's how you should think about wrap drying. And I'm focused primarily on the root of the hair. Because I want the root to collapse all of the ends. I've got this incredible colour, which I know you've been asking a lot of questions about. So, I believe Evie is here. Evie? Guys, meet Evie. Evie's one of our technicians training to be an Alon educator on a regular basis. Mrs. Evie, the colour is incredible. Thank you. Would you tell the guys uh, how we looked when we started, what yeah. it was you've done, and so forth? Right. I'm going to bring you over here to be a little bit quieter as well. Yeah. So, hi guys. So, when we started, um, Christine came in with a Regrowth was about three fingers, about a level six, and some places it was a five. So sort of round the back area here, is about a five. So we pre-lightened with mask bleach and 20 volts, one to two. On the ends of the seat hair, 
there was a bluey sort of greeny tone and it was all different colours so I just wanted to work with that, that's why I left the blue on the end. So once we lightened it, we left it on for about 45 minutes to an hour, made it really nice and white. I then rinsed it off and then we toned with the pure tone a new colour. So the roots were 10 grams of violet, 5 grams of blue, with 60 grams of cream base and 120 grams of fire gold. And that was on the roots almost like fading it into the blue. Then for the blue, I did 10 grams of blue, 5 grams of violet, 60 grams of cream base and 120 grams of fire gold and left it on for about 35 minutes washed it off and we've got this amazing colour. But we sort of smudged it in, so when we put the violet on, we smudged it in a little bit so that we got this nice softness and it wasn't no harsh line. All good? Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I ask a question? Yes. When our mother lady today, obviously she has quite large roots, yes. but she also has some colour on the end. Do you want to talk about that thought process of why we decided to go for the tongues that we decided to choose rather than bleach everything up or... Talk about your thought process because there's a lot of people who are loving the colour. Yeah. So rather than trying to bleach out the blue, I wanted to work with it. If I bleached out the blue, the hair would have been a lot more damaged. So Christy's got curly hair, so if we know that curly hair is a lot drier and it's a lot more fragile when bleaching. So rather than bleaching out that old blue, we worked with it. And then we went for the violet on the roots because obviously her hair was a little bit darker so it did lift out to a little bit more of a yellow sort of tone. So using the violet has neutralised it. And then the blue looks like it. Really nice. So if a client comes into the salon tomorrow yeah. and she wants to achieve, and the stylist wants to achieve this kind of look, but let's just say they're starting off with like, I don't know, a level four for example. How would you get to this look? What's the process you have to go through in total? How does it work? So if they've not had a bleach on their hair, you would have to start by bleaching the ends first. And um, coming through each section, putting the hair in the oil, lightening the hair, and then letting it process and going through the roots. And then you wash it off. Usually I would say pre-tone the hair, with something that's going to neutralise it. So if we're using Stabinet, I would say neutralise it with a 10-1-2 and a 10-0-1 and maybe put a little bit of 2 2 one in it just so that you add the violet tone and then go in with your pure tone. So you could use any colours that you wanted. So we could have done an orange into a yellow, a yellow into an orange. We could have done a pink into a violet or vice versa or like we've done. You could have used a green into a blue. I think these colours really work nicely though with Christy and her complexion as well. I mean with the Davenous colour, how does it work in regards to achieving the best colour for the most purest blonde and the purest faces for them whole last hour? Because I remember doing a colour change on here at night and I've been playing with obviously the bleaches. How does it work if you if you work with different product companies and you decide to convert yourself to Davenous, what are the strengths of the Davenous bleaches and what are the strengths of the tones that we can use? With the Davenous bleaches, we've got three different kinds of bleaches, so you can get a really clean bleach, um, like a really clean finish. So we've got the cream bleach, which is amazing for highlighting. We've got the mask bleach, which is what we use here, which is the best for an all over scalp bleach. And we've also got the Art Colour Bleach, which is nice for highlighting rather than an all over scalp bleach. Also, the new Colour Bleach, I wouldn't personally use on a scalp because it doesn't give enough lift, but it's really nice if you wanted to achieve like an ombre sort of look. So it's a little bit softer on the hair and it lifts to a really nice warm shade rather than the ashiest shade, which I think a lot of people do better. In regards to the toners, it's nice to play about with them because you can get so many different looks with them. We uh, we tend to mix like pinky toning to them, so we do the 10 one two with a little bit of 5 5 6 and that creates a really nice pinky tone. Or one of my personal favourites, 10 one two, 2 2 one and a little bit of 4 2 2 into it. And that achieves a really nice sort of curly, curly sort of tone. 
depends. You, with ponies, it's hard because you have to sort of play about with them. So I think we've had a lot of fun in the last year and a half with having the Master Survivor Chrome and playing about with the ponies. So what is Vibercrome? What is the difference between the new Vibercrome and the old Master? So Vibercrome is the new technology that they put into the colour. Can they hear OK? I think so. Can everyone hear me? Come over here. So we haven't got the hair dry glass in. So the mask with Vibrochrome, it's got a higher shine, it's got quinoa in it, um, it's a vegan friendly colour which is amazing because especially being in London a lot of people are more cautious of this now. Um, the benefits of it are high shine and high conditioning and it's got a wetting agent in it so it's a lot more delicate on the hair and I think clients are loving it more for the condition and the shine and it lasts longer as well. So basically guys, now I'm in a situation where I'm wrapping the hair around and I really need to focus the airflow to manage the texture of the hair. The hair's obviously got a bit of a texture to it, so I need to manage it by managing my airflow. And also the another thing you're finding, I'm finding is that obviously because the hair is bleached, obviously the hair becomes slightly more porous. When it becomes more porous, it likes to hold on to the moisture. So you need to be careful. You need to be careful about how long you're applying your heat for. Otherwise, what happens is the hair will become static. And I don't want the hair to become static. I'm really conscious of that, that process. So you can see where the hair is obviously reacting on me. And what you need to do in this scenario, if you watch really carefully, I will show you. Let me get the legs out of the way. Now watch, calm the hair down. See all these little baby hairs, get them down and force it down with the with the hairdryer. And what that will do is it will smooth down all these little babies. Now you mustn't, you must be careful obviously with the heat and you can manage your heat better. So full heat. Thank you Evie. Thank you very much. So if you have full heat, obviously you've got to be careful when you do this. So you don't want to burn the person that you're working on. But if you really focus your heat down the hair and you move it quickly, you won't burn the person, but you will get all of the all of the detail work down. Okay, coming towards the end of my blow dry in a minute. I know that you've been asking loads and loads of questions, so Michelle, do you want to hit me with them? Cutting is basically cutting a straight line, okay? I'm going to try and avoid club cutting around the outline because I want the hair to react and move and sit into position. So I use a chipping technique which helps me basically manage that. Before I, when I come to the outline in a second, I'll really go into that in detail. Let me show you what I'm doing in regards to the blow dry. I'm gripping the hair and I've got the hair dryer at the base of the, the brush okay and I'm constantly keeping the hair dryer moving the hair dryer must not stay static and I'm placing the hair into place and what that's going to do is going to allow the hair to calm down and fall into position and set into position so my actual heat is hitting the centre of the brush and that's the key here you have to hit the centre of the brush so that's where the majority of the tension is. Heat the hair up, put it into place. I'm not too worried about the ends as much because I'm going to be cutting them all off in a minute. So my main focus is the mid length and the roots. 
and I want to get a really nice shine out of the hair. And I want to make sure that all the hair is dried as evenly as possible. I'm trying not to elevate the hair too much. I'm trying to really focus my airflow. And I'm going to place the hair into position. And then in a minute, I'm going to go through all of the underneath shapes and get the underneath shapes perfect. I'm going to work some oil oil into the hair. That way, when I'm cross-checking it and I'm dusting off all my ends, my warmth, the warmth from my hand will help me mould the hair and get the ends nice and smooth, okay? I'm not worried too much about the ends of the blow dry. Like I said, I'm going to be cutting the length the majority of the length off, I'm just going to be keeping a lot of the mid length and obviously the root in place. Dry the hair through, place it into position. This is something I talk about a lot when I'm teaching. The cooling process is the key to managing the shape. So by applying, by positioning the hair into position very quickly, the hair is starting to set and will allow the hair to cool down exactly where I need it to be. Now, I've got the majority of the hair straight. I'm going to get my paddle brush. Okay. And I'm going to wrap it with my paddle brush. And the reason why I'm going to do that is it's going to soften the blow dry because I don't want the blow dry to be set. So by changing it onto a paddle brush, the hair will wrap much nicer because there's very, very little tension with the paddle brush and I'm able to get the hair nice and smooth. Also what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some oil oil in the hair and then go over it again one more time. And what's going to happen when I do that is the heat will activate the block, the oil and the hair will absorb it really well. So, oil oil. Don't be scared to use it, especially on hair that needs it. Okay? Rub it in your hands really, really, really well. And then I'm gonna work it into the hair. I'm gonna start with the short hair first. Okay? Apply, really apply that in there. And don't be scared to apply it. Then come underneath and get all of the short hair. Really apply the product. And what's gonna happen is, when I start to cross-check all the underneath, the warmth from my fingers while I'm working, the hair will start to absorb the, the product because the hair, when you've gone from that long to that short, the hair kind of gets a bit aggressive on the tips. I know you've got loads of questions, Michelle. Let me just get through what it is I need to do and then make sure you save those questions because I want to answer every single one before we go. Okay, I'm going to work the oil in, glide my fingers through the hair. Now don't, what you've got to remember is the beauty of this haircut, obviously the, the mechanics putting the basic shape in is good, but the beauty of it is that it actually happens at the end when you start to refine the outlines in and cross it. That's when the haircut starts to really polish up and come alive for you, okay? It's just like, I suppose you could argue, it's a bit like cooking. You, know, you prepare all, all of the ingredients and then it's not until you actually dress it on the plate when it actually comes alive and really amazing and it's the same principle with a haircut you know think of it like you're tailoring the shape as you're working constantly tailoring it making it work applying the product don't don't worry about thinking that it's you're applying too much product because bleached hair needs it, it absorbs it it kind of sucks it in it looks like do you love it Getting handy. Really work it in. I haven't had dinner yet, so I'll have some dinner after I finish this haircut for you. Okay, Michelle, um, in regards to the outline conversation, I'm going to go over that for you, I promise. I promise when I start working on the outline. Have you got anything else, any other questions that I can start to talk about? Uh, and then I'll come back to the outline conversation when I start to rework the outlines. We have a really, uh, it's a two part question from Amelia. She asked, she asked, Hi Amelia. Do you name uh, the individual hairstyles and color you create each time? No. 
<laughs> no, we don't. Um, I'll explain to you why. Because, okay, in this scenario, so let's talk only about this particular shape that I've done. In this scenario, I've used a specific sectioning pattern, okay, to achieve my result. Now I can use exactly the same sectioning pattern, exactly the same cutting line, exactly the same over direction elevation, but just change the length, and all of a sudden it's a completely different haircut. So naming a haircut for us as a company isn't necessarily something that we focus on as a company. What we will do, it was Amelia you said, yeah Amelia. Let me just explain something to you, Amelia, right? If we can teach you the fundamentals of cutting hair, then you can cut anything. Not a menu of four haircuts that that's all you can do, and if a client comes in and they don't fit in that menu, you're lost. That's not really what the craftsmanship's about. So if, if, if you trust me when I say, trust me when I say, come and try and learn the primal shape. And once you do that, you can cut anything you want and we can name it anything you want. We call it the Amelia haircut. <laughs> but ideally, don't think of haircuts as one shape. If I just simply change the choices of length, this haircut will look completely different, even though I'm approaching it in exactly the same way. I mean, thank you for your question, that's a really good question. And there's something that we talk about on the team, is that I know when I was training, um, there was a lot of named haircuts. Um, and they used to name the haircuts based on the model's name. So, if the model was called Mercedes, the haircut was called Mercedes or whatever. So, we tend to avoid naming particular haircuts because with technique, you can achieve any haircut and any look. And that's what we want to try and teach you, if you let us. That's what we'd like to share with you. We'd like to share with you a way of cutting hair which will allow you to do anything and not limit you in any way, shape or form. So the second part of your question is, what would you name this haircut, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call this haircut, the media haircut. It's <laughs> <laughs> after you I'm naming this haircut. Sure. And I pre-planned it before I knew you were going to ask the question. That's a really nice question. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. What other questions have you had? So, a lot of people have been wondering about the styling. Can you talk, maybe explain to them why it's so important to have such a smooth blow dry okay. when you're cutting the hair, even if the model may not blow dry this smooth at home? Great question. Who asked that question? Um, it was just, I just read that some people were wondering why it's important to get it that smooth. Okay, so, I'm going to cut on the top in a minute, and I need the top to be one consistent texture. I can't afford for it to be multiple textures, because what does that say? It affects my kinking. So I need it to be one fluid, um, texture. Now, the question is, how important is the finish? Let me be... It's quite, it's quite controversial, but I'm going to be honest with you, okay? I hate it, I hate it when I see people iron a bad blow dry. For me, for me, I, f I find that quite lazy and I find it very frustrating when I watch people do that. Um, the art of blow drying is being lost because people want the easy result, people want the easy finish. And people have become so reliant on, on the iron that they're, they're not understanding the manipulation of the brush and the heat and so forth. So I'm really quite passionate about trying to get people to do really beautiful, solid blow dries because I feel that that's an art form which is being lost very, very quickly. And uh, it's our job, um, people who can help, hopefully help, you know, resurrect and maintain that discipline, you know. 
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to check all my internal shape. And what you're gonna see, can you see all these little baby hairs? As I'm checking it, they're slowly, slowly gonna disappear because what's gonna happen is the warmth from my hand and also the oils that I'm working with are gonna start to be absorbed into the shape, okay? So, um, this is the Amelia haircut. I'm gonna call it the Amelia color as well. <laughs> and with this particular shape, I'm really trying to understand the bend of the hair and the manipulation of the hair. So again, going back to this point here, you can see where the hairline likes to change direction. So I'm gonna ignore where the hairline likes to sit. I'm not gonna comb that backwards or forwards. I'm just gonna comb it to its natural fall and pop that in. And can you see all these little baby hairs? Look what I'm doing, I'm just gliding over the surface. This is called surface cutting, okay? And it's a form of freehand, okay? Because what I'm doing is I'm not physically using one hand to achieve the result. And what this does, it just basically gets rid of any little softer bits. I quite like this little kiss curl. I think it's quite pretty, it's quite Betty Booey type shape. But I don't like the way this hair's hitting on top of the ear, so I'm gonna cut it around the ear, but I'm gonna maintain all of that. So in this scenario, what you should do is you don't want to basically um, cut a solid line because if you cut a solid line it's going to thatch out so I'm going to slowly work the shape in and I'm going to work it with the with a slicing technique and what this is going to do is going to clear the ear but make it quite raw so that way it doesn't thatch out and become a so really solid heavy shape okay so I'll do that, and I'm gonna come back and do the same on the back, okay? So I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna gently carve out all that hair. So it starts to collapse the shapes. So technically, I'm cropping all the inside hair, and then I can start to actually put the shape in. Have you got some more questions there, Michelle? Um, I can yes, see you guys. Mm -hmm. And it's actually just a personal question. Have you ever worked with Men's Fire? As I can see a lot of similarities in the way in which you work and explain things. Is that Josh speaking yeah. now? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a friend of ours uh, called Josh, he's actually a very good friend. Um, he's become quite a close friend now, actually. Um, really nice human being. Great, great barber. Um, he was here today, ironically, um, and he might be tuned in. Josh, if you are tuned in, hello. Um, Menspire is a, a company which basically uh, specialises in barbering. So for those of you who want to really kind of go down the road of clipper work and really try and master your clipper work, feel free to get in touch with the boys, okay? Um, I, it's good that they use uh, that they use this, uh, the language. I'm not sure. I obviously have never done a course with them, so I can't really tell you about uh, the language that the guys use. Um, but my advice to you is, and this is something that I focus on quite a bit. As a company, we encourage people to try out all different education companies because every education company has something to give you. Um, and the key really is to understand who you can relate to the most because there's some companies which you'll relate to much easier and much, much more personal to yourself. Obviously, what we're trying to do as a company is create a beautiful language for people to use. And what we're finding is that, um, and the beauty of it, and it um, it's hard because I, I really don't want don't to come across like Our goal is to share, and that when you share, you don't only share to people who just cut hair in the salon. You know, educators, education companies, um, everybody influences everybody, and hopefully, if our language is being embraced by different people and shared, you know, their way or whatever, I think it's a beautiful thing. As long as uh, you can relate to somebody education can be really really fun and if you do want to learn how to you know do really beautiful fade your clippers and so forth um, the guys do a great job
But it's interesting that you focused on the language because the language is the key to what we're trying to achieve. Can you come around this way, Jamie? Let's get some light in there so we can see what we're doing a bit better. Okay, I'm going to basically take, I'm going to use the small clipper and I'm going to carve that outline out a little bit. I'm going to get rid of all this excess. And what that will do is it will refine the shape and make it super clean. I'm using the corner of the clipper. I'm going to remove this length out of the way here and put that in there. Now this hair here, I'm going to comb it down and literally just clip all the line in. And what will happen is, and this is something which is good, actually quite a good learning curve for everybody. Um, does, the difference between cutting with a clipper and cutting with a scissor is quite obvious and I'll explain to you the biggest difference. One of the biggest difference of using a clipper is that when you actually cut the hair with a clipper, when you look at the hair under a microscope, the tips of the hair are cut quite square. So what happens is the hair feels a little bit more aggressive on the tip. Okay? Whereas when you cut hair with scissors, the hair tends to be cut on a slight diagonal, so it tends to be a lot softer in regards to its finish. So now I'm going to turn the hair chair around and move on this region, and I'm going to use a mirror to assess how my shape's looking. It's amazing, as soon as you put an outline in, how everything starts to come alive now. Can you see? The whole shape starts to come alive. I love that little kiss curl. It's really pretty. Because it aims towards aims to the corner of the eye, which I always think is quite a pretty thing to do. Okay, now I'm going to start to work on my outline in the back. Okay? And then what I'll do then is I'll start to work on all my lengths. So the key now is to understand what kind of shape I want this back bit to be. And I want it to be quite fun, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Then we come around here so you can use the light again. Perfect. Keep your head there for me, darling. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll tilt the head down, and we're going to have some fun now. If you keep your head there for me, darling. Thank you, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to have some fun with the outlines. I need to understand what it is that I want to try and communicate. I want it to be quite graphic, but at the same time, what I'm going to do, you're going to see me in a minute, I'm going to go through and I'm going to carve into it so that way it doesn't look so solid, okay? So the first thing I do is I'm going to put the basic shape in, okay? Obviously when I put the basic shape in, especially with a clipper, the shape's going to look quite solid, okay? But then in a minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and I'm going to refine it all and use like a pointing technique. Now I can see the hairs, can you see the hairs bending here because of the muscle underneath here? where the trapezius muscle is, which is this muscle in the centre, what's happening, if you look carefully, it's actually slightly offset. Jamie, stand from behind so you can see it. If you can see the muscle, it's actually slightly offset. So what happens is the weight pushes to one side because the muscle sticks out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve it so it actually becomes a focal point. So, start here. And just carve that out. And don't be scared to leave things because you can always take them off after. So leave it and try, try things out. Okay. So the question before was about outlines, wasn't it? Yeah, so about the outline around the ears which it seems to be pointing. Okay, good. So when I come onto this side, I'll show you again. Uh, basically, we didn't use pointing, we used chipping. Uh, and chipping is a technique which is basically creates a solid but slightly shattered line. Now what I'm going to do, I'm, gonna, I'm basically holding the hair. This is very important to hold the hair when you do this, okay? And then with the clipper, I'm just going to glide over the surface of the hair. Now it's really good when you're doing this to communicate to your client or your model not to move their head at all. Because if they move their head when you're doing this, you end up getting a big hole in your shape. And by gliding the clipper over the top of the hair, you just smooth it out a little bit and you, and you collapse the shape a little bit. 
Okay, you get rid of all those ends. So just glide it over the top of the hair. And it just smooths out the hair. Okay, this bit here I don't like it, so I'm going to change it. I'm going to carve it out. Now the thing with the symmetry in outlines, if you don't make it obvious, it ends up looking like a mistake. So in this scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the bulk of it, like this. And then I'm going to use the tips of my scissors. And I'm going to go in, I'm going to carve out the, the weight in it. Okay? When I do this, what's going to happen is the hair is going to move and react. And it's going to jump. And it's going to jump in lots of different directions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to react to it. So point into it. I'm going quite deep because I don't want the density in it. I use a tight end of the comb, and I comb that through. And what that does, it collapses the shape for me, okay? Now I'm gonna cross-check this shape. Now I can see I've got a bit of a corner in the middle here. Basically, I've got a bit of a weight line here. And the reason for that is I've got two different lengths that meet. I've got the initial length, which is basically my zone one, and then I've got the, zo the second zone coming around into that zone, connecting through. So I'm just gonna go through and make sure that that corner becomes a lot less obvious. So there is still going to be an element of difference of length because I'm working one shape into another. But by dusting off that corner, what happens is it just collapses the shape a little bit. Head down for me. Perfect. And again, I'm going to come in and I'm going to point into it and I'm going to soften it through. Now, pointing is a form of personalising, which basically removes density within the shape. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the outline because I'm not happy with the way it's sitting. Come on this, uh, let me come on this way. So with this side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a bit of fun, okay? I'm gonna come back around this way. And I'm gonna carve this out like that. Now, all of a sudden, it's starting to sit better. Now the clipper. Thank you. Get it in with your scissors first. And then get rid of all the excess. And just glide over the surface. Do some surface cutting with the clipper. And that just takes the corner off it. Okay? And now you can see all of a sudden that's sitting really beautifully. Whereas before it wasn't react it was reacting, not, not sitting right. Now I have to basically change the outline because if you come around, Jamie, you stand there for me like that, you can see that it looks like, because I haven't intentionally tried to get a balance, it looks like a mistake. So what I need to do is now I need to start to aim for a bit more of a balanced shape. So again, this side I'm going to cut the clipper to show you the difference. I'm going to carve the outline on this side. I'm going to stand with my body parallel to the shape. And let me show you how to check balance. Okay, what I'm doing, uh, Jamie, film over my shoulder. Thank you. Okay, what I do is I get my comb, I'll make sure the head is straight, make sure the chair is straight like this, okay? And I get my comb, I move all this hair so my eyes can see a bit clearer, okay? I get my comb, I place my comb, the back of the comb on one side, and I basically rotate it like that. And I see what is protruding. And then I can basically work out what my balance is. Now that I've put the basic shape in, my basic balance, now what I'm going to do again is I'm going to go through and I'm going to soften it again. Because I don't want it to be so solid. And when you're doing this, go straight into the hair. Don't go on an angle because you'll get big holes in the shape. Just go straight in. I'm using the tips of my scissors and I'm using about half a centimetre of hair to reduce the density. So my line will still be strong, but it will just feel a bit more natural, a little bit less kind of hard edged. See how I'm manipulating the head so that I can access directly into the hair. Okay. Now, remove that hair, spin the chair around, 
and use your mirror. So look at your shape. Now all of a sudden, my shape has come alive. Can you see that? Just by putting in the outline, all of a sudden the haircut starts to come alive in the back. And all my internal mechanics start to look a lot much more shiny and much more polished. Whereas before, when you were looking at it, you are thinking, oh my God, it looks a bit fluffy, what's going on? It's because the, the eye was kind of running off into nothing. Whereas as soon as you start putting the outlines in, all the inside and the shape mechanics start to come alive. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the other side. And then I'm going to start to use my length. Okay. Get the hair out of the way. I'll come back to that in a minute. Now I'm going to work on all this hair here. Again, coming the hair down to the natural fall. Okay. I, don't, I like the fact that I've got this little kind of kiss curl kink in the outline because it makes it look a bit pretty, a bit softer. Okay. But all this area here, I'm going to basically carve it because I want it to look really clean. And to be fair, it's clean from the last time, so it's not that bad. I can leave that now. I can work behind the ear now on this area here. You can see there's no definition there. So Jamie, come around this side. Again, stay on this side where the light is. And what I'll do is I'll keep playing to you, okay? So, tilt the head to the side, comb the hair down to the natural fall, and then start to carve away the shape. Now I'm using a chipping technique. Now if you can get a bit closer, Jamie, you'll see that what a, clipping technique will do, uh, what a chipping technique will do is it will basically cut little triangles into the shape which will refine the outline. And it will create a solid, but, create a solid line but a slightly broken line. And again, really work it, really, really work it. Don't be scared to spend the time refining because it's that polish, it's that finish which basically is your signature. And the moment you think you've, you know, you, you call it a day, that's the point where your, your, your standards are. And what I want is to try and encourage people to really push their standards, to make sure that every single haircut is the best haircut they've ever done. And if you have that kind of mentality, your haircuts will only improve in technique. Again, comb it to the natural fall. Don't comb it forward, there's no point. Because by doing this and cutting all that, when it goes back to its natural position, you're going to have loads of problems, loads of graduation in your line. Just comb it to the natural fall and then chip it. So for those of you watching, I don't know how many people are watching or who's watching, but please feel free to share this video if you're enjoying watching it. Please feel free to ask me as many questions as you want. And please feel free to start a little debate. Michelle, I know you've, you're probably dying. I've been talking, talking, talking. <laughs> probably dying to ask me a question. Sorry, babe. No. What's the question? So, uh, Nikki was just wondering, um, how could you make thin hair look thick? How can you make thin hair look thick? Okay, so, ideally what you want to try to do on slightly finer hair, my advice would be keep the shape much more compact. In other words, by putting strong outlines in, you instantly make the haircut look more compact. By working quite solid shapes, quite mechanical shapes, again, what that tends to do is make the haircut look quite compact. Ideally, by creating shapes that maintain density, you tend to basically have, uh, make the hair look thicker. But ideally, what you want to try to do, I'm just trying to decide what I want to do with this bit here. Do I want it more graphic there? Shall I have more of a graphic line? Yeah, let me graphic it up. So I'm going to basically take that away there so it becomes much more of a, that way it points towards the cheekbone. That line there, if I put that line in there, that's going to put, put a bit more definition and it will aim towards the cheekbone. So just basically comb it into place. Don't be scared, just get it in. Comb it once. Cut it once and it's gone. Comb it once, cut it once and it's gone. That all of a sudden becomes much more of a, a visually a prettier shape to cut. And you know what, let me have some fun. Put another shape in here, let's see what that looks like. A little shape upon a shape. It looks quite cute, quite like that. Don't be scared to try things out guys. Can you come in there a little bit? Can you maybe explain to the viewers a lot of them are asking about maintenance, but maybe explain the difference between when you're doing a creative cut 
um, in the salon? Is there a difference? Maybe go through that. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I'm in a situation where I've got. Come on, let me just see. Do I like that? No, I don't like that. <laughs> okay, so there is obviously a big difference between working something a bit more creative, something which is expressive, uh, and something which is basically um, a salon friendly look, should we say. A good haircut should last, full stop, whether it's really creative or really kind of uh, basic. The key is who you're cutting it on. Suitability, understanding who the person is. You know, I've got a beautiful young girl who's open for cool haircuts, who wants to be different, who wants to stand out from all her friends. She doesn't want to have, you know, long, boring, kind of all the same colour type hair. She's, she's young, she's kind of alive, she's studying, she wants to have fun. You know, for me, hair is about making making it personal. Think of it like you're tailoring um, something to someone's personal features. So if somebody's got a lot of, let's, let's say somebody, I don't know. See, no, let me, this is wrong, I shouldn't say that. Let me, let me try and be clear without offending anybody. Just because someone's a banker doesn't mean they're boring. Just because somebody's an artist doesn't mean they're creative. It's about understanding the person. And if I'm in the salon and I've got Mrs. Smith coming in for a haircut, if I put Mrs. Smith in a box, she'll be in a box. But the box doesn't need to exist unless you put it there. So don't be scared to try things out and change things. Don't think like, oh, but this salon works, it has to look like this. No, it doesn't. It can be whatever you want. You're an artist. You create beautiful things using hair. Hair is your material. So by, by assuming that because salon work has to be more refined and more simplified, it doesn't. Your client base represents you. And if you want to have and do really cool, funky work, then talk to your customers and get them intrigued. You want a bunch of clients. You want to come to work and you want to paint with hair. You know, paint with your scissors. You want to paint with your colour. You want to express yourself and have fun with it. You don't want to come in every day and do the same thing over and over and over again and then get so depressed when you're doing the same thing over and over again, it just feels like Groundhog Day. And often we put ourselves in that box without even realising. So in this scenario, obviously I'm working on something creative. Uh, in regards to maintenance, the way you should think about it is in six weeks, we're going to change the haircut completely. Every time you cut someone's hair, if you're cutting the same shape over and over and over again, what you're going to find is you're going to put that person into a box. And unfortunately, I think that's an unhealthy way of working. You want to, you want to express yourself just for your own sanity. So that, I think that looks really pretty, that little line there. It aims towards the cheek, and I think that's quite a pretty thing. Now I need to work on all of this length, okay? You can see that obviously I haven't ironed it. Yeah, I've, I've just basically dried the hair through. Now I want to maintain quite a lot of length around the front, so it's quite soft. Uh, I want to keep the fringe quite long. With all this hair here, obviously it looks like a bobby type shape. Now I could just refine it into like a bobby shape, which has an undercut, but I want to show off some of the undercut, okay? So I don't want to just refine my shape. I want to loosen that, but I do want to keep a lot of length to it, okay? So this is how I'm going to cut it. I'm going to put a central parting in the top. Okay, I've got this incredible colour, and I don't want to cut out all the colour because it's a shame but I do want to make sure that the hair has a swing to it so I'm going to take a vertical section in the back okay and I'm going to cut it so it overhangs the shape so it is still disconnected but it's going to sit at the point where the hairline is so I comb the hair out okay I drop the hair so I can understand where the length is going to sit okay and then that's the length that I choose I'm going to cut a round cutting line okay and the reason why I'm going to cut it round so that way there's no corner and the hair will, will move okay let go and watch how it sits it sits on my line okay now i'm not worried about the, the ends of the hair just yet because in a moment i'm going to iron and they're going to collapse and then i'm going to iron and then i'm going to point into the shape now in this scenario i'm going to comb one to two and comb two out from the base okay then i'm going to comb three to two 
So I don't need section one in my hand anymore. And that's the key, to drop sections when they're not being used. That way you're in control. So I'm going to go three to two. Okay? Now, I'm going to keep two in my hand, and I'm just going to keep introducing the sections to it. So, three to two, four to two, five to two, six to two, and so forth. And what will happen is my shape will start to drop and become longer in the front. Talk to me, Michelle. I can see All you're not right. asking questions. <laughs> so, we had a question from uh, Ilio. Okay. I'm like butchering the name. Um, and basically, it was, if she were to not style it smooth, what advice would you give her for her natural texture? Well, I don't know if you, I don't know when um, Ilio joined, but her natural texture doesn't exist anymore. Her natural texture now is coloured. It's kind of like a, uh, a slightly swollen hair cuticle, it's slightly swollen, it's slightly kind of uh, ex swollen and expanded. So you're not really going to get a beautiful bend, should we say, out of the hair, because, simply because it's bleached. Um, so it's a question more of having a haircut that if she doesn't style it, the haircut does the work. That's the key. So ideally, if, let's say for example, we're going to just wash it and leave it. The lengths need to do all the work for you. So again, just going back to my haircut, section one I took out from the base, two, one to two, two now to three. Okay, so this is section three. Or should I say, sorry, three to two, sorry. Can you quickly explain your sectioning pattern as well as you're working on the Of course, so my sectioning pattern basically is pivoting from the crown, and then working vertically through the side, I'll be directing back. So everything is coming back to section three. The cutting line is round. And you can see I'm still leaving some of that beautiful blue in the hair, but I'm getting rid of quite a lot of the dry hair on the ends. And what's nice about this haircut, as I'm working, you can see obviously the shape underneath, poking through every so often. Gina asks, explain a round cutting line and a square cutting line, and why would you choose one versus the other? It's a very good question. So, basically a round cutting line, you're, when you cut a round cutting line, it tends to have the shape of the head a lot more, and it tends to obviously not have a corner. Hair that doesn't have corners in them tend to kind of move and have a lot more freedom to them. So, try and avoid thinking about it as um, a shape which basically has a weight line to it. Whereas when you use around the cutting line, there is no weight line to it. The shape moves quite soft. Can you see how the hair is quite dense still? When I iron that, that through, I'm gonna go through my shape and I'm gonna soften the hair through by using a pointing technique, okay? So I'm gonna use some oil, oil again. Oil oil, work that into the hair. And what this is going to do, when I've ironed it through, it's going to close the cuticle of the hair for me. I love the way that colours. Look in the mirror. I love the way that colours starting to work. And once I've reduced all the density in the shape, the hair will move so much, so much, so much nicer. The hair cut at the moment is still quite solid in the lengths, so this will just loosen it up, and I'll have that sense of freedom to the shape. But it will feel like a layered bobbing shape, which would be quite nice. I mean, I've got a beautiful girl that I'm working on. Look at her face. <laughs> it makes my life so much easier. <laughs> Try and cut this hair cut on me. We're in a world of trouble. <laughs> We're in a world of trouble. So, okay, going back to the last two questions. One was about basically people, I think the, the, the impression that I'm getting by the way you're asking the questions is that people are concerned about how ongoing styling will happen and how. Can this be transferable into the salon? Are these the kind of feelings you're getting, Michelle, looking at people's questions? Yeah, I think a lot, well, six inches asks. Um, six inches? Six inch. Yeah, that's a cool name. Uh, <laughs> they just asked, um, after you had talked about expressing yourself uh, through the art of hair, yes, that is true, only if you do art hair or session. 
session work, but in the salon, we have to make clients happy and make the style work for the client's request, do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, tonight we're having fun. Um, you know, we're expressing ourselves using hair. In the salon, again, you don't, you don't have to do something really simple. You can do something really creative, but then you don't have to. You could do something really simple. Tonight we're having a bit of fun, uh, doing something a bit creative, something which is about expression and fluidity of shape. And you don't have to, sometimes you don't have to, we don't have to take it as seriously. You know, hair is about having fun. And the moment we forget that, uh, we tend to limit ourselves in regards to our, our personal expression. I think um, uh, six inch, six inches or six inch? Six inch. Six inch. I think one of the beautiful things about your question is that you're obviously a very successful stylist, okay? So you've obviously got quite a big clientele because your main focus is to make your clients happy, which is amazing. And I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Um, you know, thinking about obviously the main, the main requests of the consumer. But at the same time, what I would say to you is I'm sure along your journey, um, six inch, you've, you've done something which is maybe a little bit more expressive, a little bit... Oh, Jamie, let me say, bud. Stand there, bub. And I'll just play to you. Okay? <laughs> it's like... Punching the back of you. Okay. Um, come here, babe. Stand there. That way you can, you can basically see what I'm doing. Okay. Where was I? Basically, in a nutshell, yes, make the clients happy, without a doubt. They're paying you money to deliver a good service. If they want uh, a, a clean line, you know, just something solid and, and compact, that's what you do. But give them the option of doing something different. As the stylist, give them the option of having something fun. Because hair should be like a, it should be like a handbag. You should be able to chop and change it all the time. And, and your customers should think of it like that. They should think of it like, um, I can have this this time, I can have this this time, and I can constantly change my shape and my ideas. Michelle, can I borrow your hands? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, we just have a pause in the connection. Let's just have a pause. Just a pause in the connection. Still? Yep. Still? Yeah, it's on my side. It's just doing the loading side. Oh, okay. What about on me? On yours? Is yours okay, Jamie? Everything looks good here. Okay, so it's your phone. Yeah, maybe it's Your phone's right. well dodgy. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to iron the hair through here. I'm going to iron the hair once or twice slow and hot, okay? Um, I'm going to focus mainly on the mid lengths and ends because I want the hair to basically set into shape really nicely and I want to close the cuticle. Sorry, it's also... Okay. Is everyone having an okay connection? Please comment if it's paused on yours. Yeah, good idea. You can still see? Okay, perfect. It's probably us. <laughs> it's us English folk over here. Yeah. I don't know what, what accent was it. I don't know. <laughs> it's not, it's not Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was supposed to be Canadian, but it still didn't work. Okay, we're going to buddy up so I can ask some questions. Okay. So, again, just focusing on the mid lengths and the ends. Um, six inch, thank you for that question. I really appreciate your input. And um, I would say to you that make sure that obviously you keep doing what you're doing because you're obviously a very successful stylist. But at the same time, don't be scared to, to sometimes um, suggest things that maybe aren't consumer friendly because customers want that. Some, some customers want that. If we don't offer it to them, none of them go to the hairdresser around the corner who might offer it to them. So, start with a 10 and move to a 2. If you start them at a 10, you can get them to a 5. If you start them at a 5, you're going to get them to a 2. Is how our connection will be okay, Michelle? Yeah, it seems so. Can everyone see okay? Good. Yeah. I'm coming towards the end of my ironing. This is always the bit that's a bit time consuming. 
But ironing uh, is, is, a, is a good way of basically closing the cuticle. Again, don't see ironing as a blow drying technique. See it as a sealant technique. See it as a, a polishing technique rather than uh, you're molding the hair into shape. Just see it as closing the cuticle. Two more sections and I'm done. I can start to cut again. Have you got any more questions, Michelle? Yes, sorry. Okay. I'm just... Me and Jamie are working out the same phone over here. Um, okay. So, Mary, this is a tough question, but I'm going to give it to you. Mary I asks... Love I love it. Mary, give my, it to me, girl. <laughs> my hairdresser would charge me a fortune for this, and it wouldn't be as good. How much should we be spending on our hair every six weeks or so? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> good question, Mary. Um, okay, so my question to you would be, your hairdresser will charge you a fortune. Are they good enough to charge you a fortune? Because if they're not, then you need to get a new hairdresser. I don't believe that, um, I mean, I'm sure, Mary, was it Mary? Mary, do you spend a lot of money on your shoes? I bet you do. <laughs> I bet you probably spend a lot of money on your, on your, on your bag, your handbag, maybe your makeup, maybe your skincare. Um, people aren't scared to pay money as long as it's good quality. That's what people are buying. So if your hairdresser is somebody who you respect, and there's somebody who's earned their stripes, and there's somebody who can make you feel that you'll make you feel good as well as give you the end result that you need, then stay with them. As soon as the hairdresser can't deliver what it is that you, you, that you want, um, well, the question you need to ask yourself is, is it because they can't do it, or is it because they're genuinely saying to you that's the wrong thing for your hair? Because that's also a big, I mean, as a hairdresser, I sometimes say no to clients. I tell clients that they can't have certain things because they can't, it doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna do something as a hairdresser that you're not gonna physically be able to do yourself. Uh, that you're not gonna be able to achieve or that you're not gonna be able to, the wrong decision, should you say. Um, I would say never be scared to spend, to spend money on quality. And it's the same with education. Um, you know, our courses are expensive. But they're expensive for a reason, because you will be challenged, you will be pushed, you will be thinking differently by the time you finish. And for those of you who are watching, if any of you have done any of our courses before, feel free to comment or suggest what people should do. And please feel free to express what your experiences were. Um, because often it's not until people try something out until they understand where the real value is. So going back to Mary's question, if your hairdresser can't achieve this, it could be simply because your hair won't allow them to, or it could be because they haven't had enough education to be able to achieve it. Um, either way, 5 Great Queen Street, London, WC2B 5DG, come here and we'll do it for you here. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go through now and I'm gonna diffuse all of my cutting myself. You stay there, Jamie. I'm gonna come around like this. I'm gonna comb the hair out. Okay. And I'm gonna basically tilt your head down, darling. Thank you. I'm gonna slowly start to soften all of my cutting lines now. So I'm not gonna go really, really deep because I'm not trying to change the density of the hair. I'm just trying to change the density that sits on the the outside of the cutting line. And what this is gonna do, is gonna make the hair blend into the shape underneath a lot better. I'm going directly into the hair, and I'm gonna keep going until the line is really soft, okay? I want the line to be really soft, so when I comb it down, it just blends into the underneath shape. Okay, and I'm gonna take that hair away now, and I'll move to the section next to it. Don't do it to the same section over and over again, because then that's how you create holes in your shape. Don't be scared to really soften that in. I'm only going about half a centimetre into the hair. Okay, I'm trying to make sure that the whole haircut tends to feel a lot softer. I'm going to go for every section doing that. Again, don't, keep, don't pick up the same section over and over again. Get that section out of the way. You can have an element of it in if you want, so you can control a guide, but you shouldn't have loads of it in. Mary said she'll be stopping by soon. 
Is Mary based in London? Hopefully Don't she know. is, otherwise she's going to have to have an expensive flight. Can you just repeat the address and where we're located again? Of course. So the salon is located in number 5 Great Queen Street, <coughs> WC2B 5DG. Um, if you want to have a look at our website, it's www enna salon which is e n a salon.com so www.enasalon.com and that's basically our salon brand uh, for those of you out there who are hairdressers and who are basically um, have their own salons or work in a salon please feel free to visit our website just to understand a little bit about the brand and a little bit about a little bit about what we do um, and for those of you who want to who are interested in education um, I know we're going to be coming we've got two dates now ah I should have written it down we've got two dates where we're coming to the States uh, one is the 6th 7th 8th 9th of September and the other one is the 6th 7th 8th 9th of November um, in September we're going to be in New York so for those of you who are based anywhere near New York and want to be part of a primary shapes course, which is our very first course that you can't jump to do any kind of education program, you have to start with that course, um, feel free to email us on info at alilloneducation.com. So that's info at A-L-L-I-L-O-N education.com. Um, there's only four spaces left. Um, so, for if you are interested and you, you live in that part of the world and you want to do some education with us, uh, that's the email address that you need to use to try and secure your space. So it's on the 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th of September and the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th of November. Info at alloneducation.com. The one in September is in New York and the one in November is in Vancouver. Adrian is asking if uh, there's any plans to visit Ireland. Do you know what, I'd love to go to Ireland. Uh, to answer the question, the answer is no, we don't have any plans. Um, if he wants to invite us, we will gladly come. Um, does he have a salon? I'm not sure. Okay, let's see what he says, let's see if he's, if he's still with us. Also, Jane asks, who inspires you? Oh, what a great question. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be really honest. Um, who and what? Sorry, now he's, he's at, or she's added, who and what inspires you? One more, one more so, factor. So who inspires me, if I'm really honest, is um, my team. They really inspire me. My children, they really, really inspire me. They are the reason why I try, I'm trying to be really good at what I do, because I want to be a really good example to them. So they can achieve their dream if they really want. Uh, you guys inspire me, the fact that you're giving up your, your Tuesday nights to watch me, that's very humbling. Um, and I hope I'm doing a good job, and I hope, you, I hope you're, you're enjoying it. Um, so the people that inspire me are really the people that I work with. My team is incredible. I mean, My goal when I finish my career, um, which may be quite soon because I'm getting quite old, um, my goal is to be able to say and feel like I've made a difference in a lot of people's journey and that I've developed some really amazing people who will take the initiative to the, level, the next level after I, I finish. Um, that's something that I really want to be a part of, I want to be part of that process. And I really want to try and inspire people to, to believe that they can be amazing because they can be, they just need to just be dedicated and focused. Um, a bit much, right? I just want, I just, I really want us as a company to be recognized for helping people and for making a difference. And our language is the key to that because once you master the Adlon language of hair, you'll be going around teaching with it and you'll be going around sharing it. And hopefully, uh, it's already, we know it's already started anyway, but people will be influenced, uh, even people who, who educate themselves. And I think 
that for me I find quite inspiring. The fact that we're actually having an impact uh, on people and, and their dreams. So who inspires me? My children, my family, my colleagues, people that I've worked with in the past, um, people who are obviously spending their time watching this. You guys inspire me because it shows me true passion. And I love that. I need that. For my fuel, I need that. Um, and what inspires me is if you go onto um, YouTube and you type in Alilon Education, it's A L L I L O N, Alilon Education, you look at our YouTube channel, you will see all of our previous collection videos. Okay? And one thing you're going to find really, really obvious. By the way, let me go back to what I'm, I'm trying to teach education here. Why to comb <laughs> stops the hair from becoming static because the hair's dry and benign. If I use a tight end of the comb, I cause friction, friction then causes static, then I'm in a world of trouble. Um, back to the YouTube channel. Um, if you go on there, you will see a lot of our previous collections, and what you'll find is that a lot of our collection tells people, a lot of our collections tell people stories. Jamie, have a look at the mirror. That's the kind of shape that I want to try and create. I love that little short bit peeking through. I love the idea of the blue kind of wrapping around, and it looks quite pretty. It looks like a kind of classic type graduated shape, but obviously we, we all know that it's so long. Um, but it's, I think it's nice because it opens up the face. That little point there shows off this cheekbone, which I think looks really good. If you, if you actually aim at the hair now, so I turn it around, yeah, so you can actually see it. So that little bone there now is, that little piece of length is highlighting that cheekbone. Uh, the hair that wraps around is giving this sense of positioning on the jawline. So in the front, it's focused. I'm focused on the jawline with this length and the cheekbone with this length. So those are the two lengths that are causing my shape to sit nicely. And then if you look in the mirror, you will see, can you see my fringe area, this bit here? I'm going to cut this, it sits on the cheekbone here, which will make it, give it a really nice focus on the jawline, on the cheekbone. So if I section off that hair there, so I'm going to go to the recession, the corner of the recession, okay? And I'm going to do that on this side too. Uh, Michelle, can I borrow your fingers? Thank you. Okay. Now with this here, I'm just going to simply comb it down and I'm going to cut it with no elevation and I'm going to cut it on that cheekbone. Head up for me, darling. Thank you. I'm going to use the previous fringe as a guide. So using this length as a guide. So I'm not going to cut a lot off that. I'm going to just tidy that. But I'm going to cut a little bit more off this side here. Okay, I'm going to cut slightly triangular lines is getting a little bit longer on this side that way it will sit on top of the ear okay and that way if you look in the mirror now Jen, I'll have a bit of a fringe which highlights that cheekbone okay and then when, it, when I wear it on this way again I'm highlighting this cheekbone so what I'm doing is I'm focused purely on the features of the face Come my hair to the natural form and then just work your line, make sure it's super clean. I'm going to soften it in it anyway, but it allows the shape to build. I hope you guys are liking what I'm doing. I hope you're, in, I hope you're enjoying the shape. I hope you're liking the haircut. Yeah, of course. It's, <laughs> it's amazing, your really. I'm speechless. <laughs> it is your haircut. Okay, I'm going to keep this length here. Okay, but I'm. Can you see how? Should I keep this length or should I remove it? No, look. I might. Okay, I'm going to comb this hair to the natural form. Jamie, look, look, look in the mirror, babe. Natural form, okay? And then I'm going to point the line on. Comb the hair to the natural form and just chip that line in. And that will just open up that cheekbone for me, okay? And then I'm gonna go through, I'm just gonna soften the hair through using a pointing technique. So I've got my shape underneath, I've got the hair that wraps around the ear in the back. That's all working nicely for me. I've got my little, my little kiss curl here, which I think is quite cute. <laughs> and now I'm gonna soften this length and I should almost be done. So, Mary has a question. How much 
you charge and how much time do you allow? Please ask the question if you've written it. I know. Please ask it. No, that's what it was. How much do you charge oh. and how much time do you allow? Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so in this scenario, um, you know, we're having fun together, so I'm not in a hurry. Um, I'm enjoying doing the haircut. I'm being a bit selfish because I'm kind of in the zone and I'm talking a lot and I'm kind of focusing on the detail. By the way, I'm using a pointing technique where I'm going directly into the hair just to soften that cutting line. So when it does fall down on the face, it falls down with an element of softness, okay? Um, so I usually, in the salon, we all take an hour from start to finish. Um, I personally charge £150 per haircut um, and we have different price brackets depending on who's doing your hair for you. Um, if I'm honest, I don't really cut a lot of hair in the salon anymore. I only do like a Thursday night and a, and a Saturday. Um, but I do like to get in there with the team and, and cut a bit of hair because it's important that they can see that you can achieve a strong st standard in a short time frame. Um, I, I get quite frustrated when I hear people say, oh, but I can't do that in an hour. You can. You just have to just comb it once and cut it once. Um, what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm just going to use a gentle slicing technique to remove a little bit of density. Just so that the underneath colour starts to peek through a little bit. As you're doing that, you comb it through with the wire tooth for the comb. And that just removes a little bit of the density in the hair. Comb the hair to the natural form. And then gently work your, your hand, your scissors through the hair, and that will just soften it all through. Sounds like Mary wants to come and get a haircut. <laughs> also, Good. Donna asks, do you only style European hair? Okay, so it depends on what we're talking about. For example, if we're talking about Afro-Caribbean hair, uh, we don't tend to work with things like um, relaxers a lot and we don't tend to work with like wigs or extensions and things like that as a brand we don't tend to focus on that we're not the masters at that or oh, sorry let me repeat that let me change the words said that we're not specialists at that um, so I would suggest that obviously I mean for example if it was a relaxed afro um, we could definitely work it we definitely cut it for you um, if it was a natural afro that wouldn't be an issue if it was um, it was more specialised, i.e. extensions or things like that. We wouldn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be the best people for that. So there's no point in me trying to. I wouldn't lie to someone about that. If you want a really good haircut and a really good colour, you come and see us. Um, if you want um, beautiful long extensions and so forth, we're not the brand. We're not the brand for that. I'm just thinking, right? Suitability wise, I'm thinking about losing this length here. I'm thinking about bringing it up to like the cheek, the kind of lip area because it looks nice when I tuck it, that looks really cool, but that's not necessarily how it's going to sit every day. So I might just bring it up so it's more of a kind of lip length. So it looks like a, a yeah, I'm going to do that. So, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop a chair up. People might be going, No, please don't do that. But I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Please leave it, I like it. Gina says, I think I should. Yeah. On your side. So I'm gonna calm it down to the natural fall. I'm gonna use the corner of the lip, I'm gonna roll my comb my comb. So again, focus on the natural fall. Jamie, can you see okay? Yeah. Should we turn around and face the light? Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. Alright, feel so you come this side. There you go. So Comb the hair down, the corner of the lip. Let me see actually suitability wise if that wall that would look like. Yeah, that would look quite cute. Yeah, that would look cute. So we're going to do that. Top of the head. Roll your comb from that point to secure a bit. Nip it in. Now we've got a guide to work towards. Okay. Now comb the hair down to the natural fall. This is really important, okay? And then secure the hair like this, and then cut your line in. And 
then we're going to go off and soften it so it's not solid. Lift the hair up, rest it in your comb, and then really soften that through. I don't want it solid. I keep the corner solid there in the front, but over the ear, just reduce the density so the shape has a nice bit of movement to it. Go directly into the hair. Yeah, that's cute on that one. Now, look what happens now to the shape in the front. You get a beautiful little fringe with a nice little line that works so now it looks like quite a classic type shape look if we do tuck it we still get a little bit poking through but the shape will blend in a bit nicer in fact what would look incredible is actually if I was to blend it into the fringe full stop so the whole thing is like a, like a quite a rounded shape like that that would also look really beautiful if I was to basically take that away there and round that off. But we're not going to do that because <laughs> I don't want to freak her out too much. We've gone for a massive change. We're going to point into the ear one more time. I hope they like the little change that I've just made. I personally think it will sit better and it will look a bit nicer on the face. Now, if you look in the mirror for me, the lips become a fog like that. Face me. Well, this will become the focal point, this whole area here now. We've drawn all the attention to this area here. The fringe and the line. This now is now the focal point in the face. This side, I could keep it so it's a bit asymmetric. So it focuses on the jaw. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually sit it on the jaw. Okay, so I'm gonna tilt the head across, place the hair down and just nip that in so it actually sits on the jaw now the jaw becomes a focal point and, and the uh, cheek becomes a focal point and the lips become a focal point put that in quickly comb it once, get it in don't waste any time, don't faff around and then we're going to soften that through Okay. We'll tilt the head again any questions Michelle? yes, uh, Tonic Hairstyle asks are your scissors available Oh, what a good question. Okay, boys, let me give you some detail. Ready? These are the new bad boys. These are officially brand new. I, I unboxed them today. Uh, these are going on sale as from today. They're basically the gunmetal grey wing blades, and they are exclusive to Alilom. And you can buy them very easily just by emailing info at alloneducation.com so it's info at um, I'm not going to lie to you guys absolutely loving them I can't even I mean uh, we've got our original scissors which I absolutely love too and I think um, I really, these are straight edged so the handles are dead straight whereas our classic scissor is uh, more, slightly more ergonomic which I actually I do really like that if I'm honest but I'm enjoying playing with these, this new pair and I'm enjoying the straight edge. So yeah, if you want scissors, info at alloneducation.com and you can get them at any point. Okay, so I'm gonna be finishing up my shape now. I'm just gonna go through and diffuse all the weight that sits on the, the lengths that are sitting on top of my shape. If you've got any questions, now's the time to ask. I'm just gonna answer, focus on answering any questions, Michelle, now, yeah? So hit me with them. All right, so this one I just thought you'd really like to hear. Mary, um, who was asking questions earlier, said, I've learned so much and I don't even cut hair, but I think I might like the job change. <laughs> Mary, you start Monday. <laughs> okay, and then Gina asked, do you ever ask your clients if they have a bad side? A bad side? Oh, what a good question. Um, as in, okay, that's an interesting question. Let me see if I've understood the question properly. Um, I know when, I, when people kind of do loads of selfies and stuff, they, you know, that's a massive thing now, isn't it? All this selfie malarkey. Um, people, if you look at people's um, Instagrams and so forth, you'll see that they always tend to take it at a certain angle. <laughs> it's usually from above slightly, and it's always kind of one side of their face. 
Um, and usually it's because that's how they tend to see themselves as being, um, oh, I, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sorry. Um, everyone has one side they prefer on their face. Uh, mine is this side. I, I, <laughs> um, I think the reason why people tend to prefer one side of their face and the other side is simply because uh, that side of their face is naturally slightly more symmetrical. Um, the more symmetrical the fa your features are, naturally the more attractive to the eye things are. Um, that being said, a lot of people, a lot of clients, if you've got, say, a feature that isn't as attractive, you would tend to hide it by placing some length there or placing a, sh a shape that doesn't necessarily focus on that area. Remember, when you cut a line on the face, the line is like an arrow. Um, by the way, I'm just running the iron over the top again just to seal the ends because I've been pointing into it and uh, that obviously has an effect on how the ends sit. Um, so if you don't want to focus on a feature, don't go cutting a line there. Because if you put a line there, that's instantly going to basically highlight that feature. And if a client or a consumer, when you're looking at them, if one part of their face isn't as symmetrical, don't cut a line. Keep it soft. Try and avoid focusing the detail on that area. Good question, Hayes. Okay. Linda asks, how far in advance do you need to make an appointment in your salon? Um, it depends who's doing it for you. <clears throat> With me, um, say the directors, usually we're, we're always out and about teaching in different parts of the world. So it's quite difficult to get an appointment with us. Um, if I'm really honest, uh, the chances of you get an appointment with one of the directors is quite unlikely. But <clears throat> when I say to you we have a level of standard within the salon, I'm saying it with confidence because we've, we've invested a lot of money in training people to get you to the right standard. I can't go around the world saying, oh, you know, you have to aim high, you need standards, you need quality control, you need beautiful work, you need discipline. I can't go around, around the world trying to inspire people in that way and then have my home a mess. That's for me unacceptable. So I've got an incredible team who produce beautiful work um, and have, have had amazing training by some of the directors here. So feel free to try anybody out and feel free to come and experience Enna because I promise you, you won't be disappointed. But to get an appointment with one of the directors, is, it can be very tricky, simply because we're away, we're out of the country quite a lot. Um, John Morrison has said, Davos is currently exploding in Ireland, north and south. Any plans for you guys doing anything over here with Davos? Maybe. Um, the Davenest distributor in Ireland will, will potentially be the person that hires us. If he has a salon with a team of people inside and he'd like Alan to come and train his team, uh, we can definitely do that. If you e email us into Alan Education, uh, we can then have a discussion about it. At the moment, there isn't anything planned. Our focus at the moment is we're going to be doing a lot of stuff in America. Like I said, we're in New York on the 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th of September and we're in Vancouver on the 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th of November. Um, what a beautiful colour, guys. Look at this. I mean, isn't that incredible, isn't it? That's such a, that's such a beautiful job. Mm -hmm. Evie and the colour team have done an incredible job with that. Okay, so I've come to the end of my haircut. I hope you do like my haircut. I've done, I spent a lot of time on it. And we spent a lot of time making it refined. Um, I love the fact that you've got this multi-tone. I love the fact that you've got all these different lengths. I love the fact that you've got obviously the undercut shape, which basically sits down and uh, looks different every time. You know, I love that. Um, I'm going to draw it for you quickly, okay? And then, if you've got any last-minute questions. I want you to ask and Michelle will answer for me, guys. Would you want to be hearing one of me? Um, Jamie, come up here, darling.
I'm going to draw the diagram for you. For those of you who are educators out there, this is a good way of you identifying how to achieve the shape and how to teach it. So from here, we've gone round like that. We came round all the way like that, down there. No, no we didn't, I got it wrong. Mm -hmm. This side went up and down. It was this side we started. Mm -hmm. We went round like this. We came round and then we came down the back. Mm -hmm. Like so. That was our first zone. This is zone one, okay? We then worked vertical sections. Like this, okay? All the way around. This was our sectioning pattern. And then we came back around like this. And that was our sectioning pattern, okay? Our cutting line was round, so it hugged the head, okay? Our external shape, which again was our cutting line, came up. It came down, it carved across, and then it flicked like that. That was our shape that we cut, okay? The over direction that we used was basically on the base. Okay? So we come here out from the base when we did it, like so, okay? Our method of working was we work from the front to the back, like so, and then we work from the back to the front, like so. Okay, again we're going to go around like that. Perfect. Now, we'll go back to our sectioning. The opposite side, we came round, down, up, and round like that. Okay, so we came from here, we came just above the occipital bone, didn't we? like so. Okay, then our sectioning pattern, we started off, let me remember how we did it, we started off diagonally through the front, yep, yeah, and then we carried on, that was it, yes, so our sections basically continued all the way around like so, until it connected in to this zone. So it came diagonally round like that. All the way around. And our, our number system was everything moving backwards. And again, our cutting line was a little bit tighter and a little bit shorter, but also round, like so, okay? Uh, our external shape, we cut it round and then we cut it down. So basically, it hugged the hairline and it became a pointy feature in the front like so. So again, I'm using the diagram as my cutting lines, which are blue, okay? And my internal shape was quite tight, literally just hugged the head like so. So that was that shape. Okay, let's draw our direction of hair to the cutting line. Direction of hair to cutting line. Okay, then through the top, our section pattern pivoted. So it started off in the top like that. And it pivoted like so. So for those of you who are out there who are learning how to cut hair, and for those of you out there who are educators, um, this is a really, really important part of the process because if you can draw a shape, you understand it. If you can't draw it, you don't understand it as well as you should. Um, and we do a course specifically on diagram training. So if anyone would like to focus on this type of thing, we can do that. We usually teach, if I'm honest, uh, the people that do this course tend to be teachers so that they can go around and they can share the knowledge with other people. Um, one of the most important reasons why this is important is because 
how many times have you gone and done some education somewhere and then you look at your notes maybe, I don't know, two months later and you're just like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what happened there. There's loads of squiggly lines with no definition. That's quite a common thing, if, if I'm honest, that I've seen a lot of people do. A lot of people come to our courses and they do the same thing. They, that's the fringe. You also cut a fringe, don't we? I must not forget that point. Now people come to our courses and we give them like a little bite size of the diagram training just so that they can document their work properly. Okay, so my number system basically was um, one to two, two to three, like so. And then everything came back to three. So one to two, two to three. And then everything came back to three, like so. And then everything, everything came back. So let's do this, goes to there, this goes to there, this goes to there, this goes to there, this goes to there, good. I'm gonna have a team teasing me later on. Because whenever I say good, it's because, I'm, it's because in my mind I'm just trying to confirm that I'm doing a good job in regards to I'm getting the, the information correct. So I'm going to have the team teasing me later on tomorrow. Yeah, good, Johnny, really good. Okay. There you go. And everything is coming back to that point, like so. Mary has a question, and she said, I thought it was back to two. Uh, everything was back to two, yes. So one went to two, two went to three. Sorry, one went to two, two went to three, and then everything came back to three. So Mary, who's not a hairdresser. Mary, who you know? Mary. <laughs> is that Pedro saying good? It was Pedro again, just commenting, because it was Mary that is not a hairdresser. <laughs> Mary, you're right. You're right, darling. You start Monday. I told you, you start Monday. Good. So, there you go. Actually, let me not draw this here. Let me draw the fringe here in this diagram. There you go. I know probably the team, if any of the team are watching, they're probably thinking, Johnny, don't forget the fringe. Ted's probably thinking that now if he's watching. Johnny, um, John asked. Um, it's Jonathan telling me he's not allowed to ask. No, questions. it's John Morrison. He said, hey, Johnny. Hey, Johnny mate. from Belfast here. How are you doing? Firstly, stunning look, absolutely loved it. Secondly, Thanks, are there any one-day color or cut courses at Emma Salon, uh, or are they all two or four-day courses? Okay, so if you go on to www.adlonneducation.com, what you're gonna find, actually, when it's slightly shorter than that, when it's slightly shorter on one side. Um, if you go on to uh, www.adlonneducation.com, what you're going to be able to see is you're going to be able to see all of our courses. Um, the majority of them are two days. If, you're, if you want us to come into your salon and spend a day with you, obviously we can do that for you. Um, if you email us at info and education, a lot of people tend to hire us to come to their salon to train their staff. Um, even if it's for a day, it's just kind of like a source of inspiration for the team which is really cool. Now remember, can you see, do you remember this length that I had here? I basically allowed this length, I measured it by basically dropping it to the hairline, okay? So it was about there. And what you do, we did a round cutting line like this. Okay? And all the hair came back to this point, which then allowed to keep length in the front and length on the outline. And then don't forget after, when the hair came down, when the disconnection dropped, it dropped down to the jaw. So the line, came from the inside of the shape and it dropped down to the jaw on one side like this. This is obviously my disconnection length. Then we had our fringe which basically went up like that. And on this side we basically went round to the corner of the lip like so. And then this, this hair came down like that. 
and they say, oh, let me do this again, sorry, not happy with that. You say I came down, which was the, the hill on the side. And then the fringe dropped around, I think it was by the cheekbone, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. So that's the basic mechanics of my shape. Sorry, my drawing is a bit scruffy, I do apologise. A bit messy. Ah, oh, I hate when I get messy. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've drawn you the whole haircut. Feel free to um, feel free to share this video. I've enjoyed doing it, the haircut for you. Please say thank you to my model who's been amazing today. Um, I I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for asking questions. If you do have any more questions, feel free to email us or Facebook me or whatever. Um, and we will see you next week. Uh, next week I'm going to be in the Philippines. So we'll be doing an hour unplugged from the Philippines. So hopefully I'll see you then. Have a lovely day. Thank you for joining me.